What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with SPY, Tesla, NVIDIA, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. And break down what's happening with the economic calendar and what you should be watching for as we have the FOMC meeting for tomorrow. But before I break anything down below this information, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit any amount of money into the account, you are guaranteed up to six free stocks. If you deposit $500 into the account, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks plus six months of level two data. And putting in $25,000 or more guarantees you 70 free stocks plus 12 months of level two data. So with that being said, guys, the offer is in six days. So check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down what's going on with the markets. As I predicted yesterday, yesterday, guys, we saw SPY break out very nicely. We had a nice green day today with this mini squeeze hitting 464. Tesla ended up underperforming because of the Chinese sales, uh, the Chinese registrations at least, not to mention some bad news for many different EVs. But Apple closed green. NVIDIA was green. Very, very decent green day. QQQ pumped quite a bit, very, very nicely approaching 400 as predicted. Microsoft pumped as predicted. The market was green. This is exactly what I predicted, guys. The market continued to hold up after CPI came out. But the question is, what's going to happen for tomorrow as we have even more data? So first and foremost, let me just remind you all that CPI was aligned with expectations. Imagine if this was below expectations, the market could have blown up even more. But this was just as expected. Core CPI came out at 4% aligning with expectations. CPI year over year was at 3.1% aligning with expectations. Now, for Wednesday, I just want to call out that PPI uh, will once again uh, be coming out. This is a leading indicator for CPI. This could shake the markets. We want PPI to be aligned with expectations at about uh, 2.1 to 2.2%, at least on the core side. And then for PPI year over year, we want this to be around 1 to 1.2%. We'll be watching to see how it looks an hour before the market opens. Then after that, I just want to mention that at 11.30 a.m., we have the 17-week bill auction coming out. This could cause some volatility. But the biggest thing, at least for the end of the day, is going to be the interest rate hike decision at 2 o'clock p.m., followed by the FOMC meeting at 2.30 p.m. for the press conference with Jerome Powell's speech. So as a reminder, at 2 p.m., okay, for Eastern Standard Time, that's when the decision is announced that the Fed is going to either raise rates or pause. I'm very confident, and this is what the market's sticking to, that the Fed is going to skip and not raise rates again. I think it's very unnecessary as CPI is continuing to downtrend. So the Fed will likely pause during the next meeting, and the market may like this in the very beginning. But that's going to be at 2 p.m. when the, the announcement's made and when then we see like the economic projections by the Fed. And then at 2.30 p.m., 30 minutes after that, we have the press conference when Jerome Powell starts his speech and the market tends to go crazy when the guy talks. So what do I think is going to happen? Honestly, guys, I think we might just continue to respect this channel. But Sometimes when Powell speaks, he does cause some downs that I can't really predict that. But what I can tell you is that we might see SPY continue higher like this, get very, very close towards this, like, uh, you know, the, the 465.5 area. If PPI is decent, then we might get a little rug pull by Powell, just a possibility. Sometimes this happens, followed by a nice bounce, and we just continue higher going into like the next day like this. That's one possibility. Will Powell reverse the whole thing and cause us to sink? That looks unlikely, but it's always another possibility. But I find a move like this very probable for SPY. Same thing on the QQQ. The QQQ is approaching this resistance at 400. There's a good chance that we might see this thing just like push a little bit more, maybe get just a little above it towards 401. Then a rejection back down towards the yellow trend line. Maybe Powell causes some kind of like rug pull temporarily just for it to bounce, kind of just consolidate like this, continue higher later. That's a very, very strong possibility on the QQQ. Watch and see what Powell causes, guys. I can't predict this with 100% certainty, but uh, sometimes you never know. And this is what I find to be very likely. For NVIDIA, NVIDIA is actually at resistance. I don't know if we're going to break out more first and then drop or not, uh, but we're actually getting very close to this imbalance fill up here. We could see NVIDIA make an attempt to go a little bit higher. We could be testing 478. We have to see if this wick breaks here. If we break this high, we could get one push like this into the very low 480s, then a rejection with Powell giving his little speech or whatever. And then the market might try to hold up from there. And we could even revisit this trend line right here if we get a big rug pull by Powell. Uh, and then we just bounce back up afterwards. That's another like real 
realistic possibility. Uh, but there's also the possibility that NVIDIA does not break this high, and we just kind of like reject from here. So it depends on if you break from here and reject or not, but there's a good chance that NVIDIA could push a little bit higher and then make its way back down if we do get some kind of rejection thanks to Powell. Uh, I'm only saying this because sometimes when Powell gives his speeches, the market like cools off a bit. So there's another possibility of that happening uh, before we go and continue our move. For Apple, Apple's currently at resistance. We will see if this is like a head and shoulders or not. My gut tells me Apple might try to push a little higher, try to fill this gap up to like 195.7. Market might push up in the beginning after PPI. And then Jerome Powell starts his speech. Who knows what the guy's going to cause? Could Apple retrace like this during Powell's speech and then like bounce back up? That's one possibility. We'll have to see what Powell says. There's a good chance he might cause some concerns because core CPI was at 4%. It was kind of stuck. So we'll see what he says. There could be a little Powell like rug pull followed by a bounce. That's very probable. Now, what about for Tesla? How is Tesla stock looking? I'm trying to be kind of brief right now. Tesla, in my opinion, is not looking that strong. It's been on a downtrend. The reason why Tesla's looking weak is because we got some bad news when it comes when it comes to Chinese registrations. Analysts are saying that they're bearish on Tesla. Tesla has downside coming. And there's been a lot of bad news. So Tesla could pop a little higher towards like this two. 38 ish area. We might get a rejection like this thanks to Jerome Powell, then rebound like this. We might see a move like this on Tesla. So I think it's just going to continue to respect this channel. And I think that's looking, <coughs> excuse me, it's looking a bit more bearish for the time being. Now, I also want to add just a couple more tickers, guys. I want to be very quick with this video. So if I could back test $8 and reject, it might push a little bit more towards 8.06 and then reject back down to 7.8, then try to hold right over there. It's going to be worth watching as time goes on. For the Russell 2000 or the IWM, I just want to mention that uh, it's starting to get a bearish cross in the PPO. Might back test 187.6 and come back down. We have this like big wick that could be revisited thanks to Jerome Powell's speech before it bounces. That's another possibility. Powell could cause a little drop and then a pop after that. Microsoft might push a little higher. We're actually still at the top of this resistance. We're at 375, so we'll see if you reject here or not. Uh, could be forming kind of like a triple top here. So watch and see this 375 area. Does Microsoft reject and come back down to 370, or do we break above that? That's going to be very key. It looks like it could push a little higher above it, but then it might come back down to 372 thanks to Powell and then bounce. So pop, drop, and then pop is very probable in my honest opinion. Just a couple more, guys, because I want to make this video very quick, very brief. For AMD, it could push up towards... Uh, put, it could push up a little bit more towards that the wick right over there at that 140 area, then reject. There could be a back test of this support over here towards this 132 area. So it could come down to like 132 and then bounce. So a little pop and drop to 132 and a bounce during Jerome Powell's speech is very po possible. I can't promise it. It depends on what Powell says, but that is what's very likely to happen based off what we've seen. The VIX is still at 12. No sign of it bouncing yet. It's still looking very weak, not really giving us anything to work with just yet. It's very weak. Dollar has rejected off the 200 EMA, still looking kind of weak. Coinbase, in my opinion, it could push up, make an attempt to fill this gap, could technically push a little bit more, then come back down towards 134 and then bounce. So a little pop and drop back down and a bounce is still a real possibility. But it's kind of range trading between 134 and 140. Uh, eight for now. It might just continue to range trade as the days go on. For Alibaba, I called out like the fact that as long as we hold seven, I think 75 is coming. It held 70. It's now at 71.39. I think 75 is coming as long as it does not break below 70. For Google, came down just a little bit, looking a little weak. We're going to be looking at this wick down here, not to mention this imbalance of the support. I could see this thing coming down to 131, then trying to bounce. Uh, watch that very carefully. This is where our breakout area happens to be. Support is very, uh, just barely holding. Um, a drop and then pop is still a possibility. On Amazon, in my opinion, Amazon is kind of stuck going back and forth and back and forth. Retail could be looking at this like head and shoulders like structure, but I think that it depends on Jerome Powell. Does Powell give us a rug pull in the markets? Watch for 146. We'll see if we back to this 146 and bounce. If you lose it, watch it come down towards 144. So if you lose 146, 144 is next. It could pop and drop, but we'll see if Powell causes anything like that. For Meta, Meta is once again up for now, but watch and see if Meta tries to form like this cup and handle and tries to push up higher. Um, that's going to be key for us. Make sure you watch this resistance like right over here at this 
335 area. We also have this imbalance at 340. So the chart looks bullish. I think it could get very close to 340, then reject. But it looks like we have a cup and handle. I could see it break out a little bit more than reject. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Thank you all so much for listening. Hopefully this video was helpful. Sorry, I can't predict anything like with as much uh, as much certainty because I think the market will pump a little bit more when we open, but I don't know what's going to happen with Jerome Powell and his speech. He could cause a little like rug pull temporarily before we drop. That's what typically happens when we pump this much. And that's what he typically causes when we see like CPIs or core CPI being the same. So just be careful with Powell's speech at 2.30. We'll see if he causes some kind of drop and we'll see if the market bounces after that. But with that being said, thank you all so much for listening. Hopefully this video was helpful. I tried to make this one really, really quick, very, very short and very simple. Tried, I tried to make this like really, really fast. So have a great day, guys. Have a great weekend. Not weekend, a great rest of the day. And I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you and peace out.